Okay, hi everyone. Let's start with a little survey on a scale of one to 10. How disappointed are you to just see me sitting here after that unbelievably cool introduction? Well, don't be too disappointed because um, I want you to know how many people, 63 year olds, pick up uh, superhero costumes from the dry cleaners. Uh, you know, probably not too many, and you might see that costume uh, coming up a little bit uh, later in the show. And, you know, one of the unbelievable privileges uh, that I have uh, in, as part of my Forrest Gump journey into cybersecurity is that I've learned a little bit about many, many, many things, but nothing in depth, which is why I have world-class guests on the show. Say hi to Tina Gravel. Hi, Tina. Hi, Gary. So happy to be here today. We are so happy to have you. And I have to just begin by saying, I'm going to pay you the number one compliment that I have available to me, which is I'm going to call you Zippy. And, you know, you are just a Zippy human being. And our audience is going to get to experience that firsthand. Yeah, yeah, you have a mask. Let's see. Uh, you, you're going to wear a superhero mask? Well, to me, anybody that wears this kind of mask today in public is my kind of superhero. And do you see how I put a T and a T? This is for my for my superhero name that Gary gave me, which you'll be happy to hear in just a moment. Teaser. Here we go. That, that is a really good teaser. And here we go. A tenacious Tina. She's the SVP of Channels and Alliances over a great company called AppGate. And uh, is going to be my co-host from now on if you don't you know, stop being so cool. You're too funny. Yes, you're too funny. You know, I love, I love play and I love what you're doing with these cartoons. I could, I could, I could just stay on your website all day long and look at all of the, the, the different cat characters. Anybody that hasn't been to your website, what you should just tell them what it is right now because it's just <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that don't know what I'm trying to do, I'm dying to get a wow from him. So I'm doing everything I can to pander to the host. <laughs> to get well, a you're doing a great job on, on the banter scale, but these particular uh, adulations are are not something I just give out willy nilly, you know, but you'll have ample, ample opportunity as, as you know, you're talking to a, a good friend, uh, Tyler Conewood. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Gary. Hi, Tina. How are you? So glad to see you. So glad to see you, too. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if I can call two people Zippy at once. Uh, the Internet might crash, uh, but I'm going to try. You're, you're both incredibly, incredibly uh, Zippy. And and uh, Tyler uh, is, uh, is also uh, an author. Uh, Tina and Tyler are both authors. Um, and uh, her given name today is... Tyler Telehealth. Why would I give you that name, Tyler? Um, because I am launching a startup called My Connected Health that is all about global healthcare and connectivity. And I'm sorry that I didn't bring a costume. I feel terrible about that. <laughs> no, uh, there's, there's no need to feel terrible about it. Um, you can uh, grab something. Uh, you have a dice behind you, a number four. I don't think so, but I have angel wings somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you have, you have, why do you have angel wings? Let's just start with that. It's part of a costume. For... A Halloween costume. An angel. <laughs> oh, okay. Was it for Halloween or? Yeah. No, I just dress like that all the time. <laughs> for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, actually, that, that, that's really funny because, you know, so do I. I, I wear this. This, this costume and my better half Valerie thinks I'm really just sort of, you know, batshit. And so uh, I'm going to share with our audience an incredible tool that is, that has helped with our marriage. And this is uh, supposed to, you know, be me, but the important part is when you squeeze this doll's hand, listen what it says uh, to your better half. Honey, I love doing the dishes for you. <laughs> or, Wait, here's another one. I've been thinking about you all day long. <laughs> I've left you with some extra cash to go shopping with the girls today. Oh! I like it. Me too. 
anyways, um, she threw that doll at me and it hurt, but that's a, you know, a different, a, a different uh, uh, sort of story. But, um, you know, what, what's interesting is, oh, wait, we seem to have some breaking news here. Um, can, can you spot that? What does that, what does that say there? Well, women have 48% of overall jobs. The percentage plunges, plunges to 14% for females in information security. Ah. ah. Is that is that uh, valid, Tina? Is that a is that valid, or what, what's the order of magnitude now? You know, for uh, women in cybersecurity. I would say that that's accurate. I would say it's pitiful, and there's a lot of reasons why it's pitiful. But uh, yeah, I'd I'd say that it's it's probably in the pandemic. The pandemic has made it worse than ever. We have women in the workforce. It, it looks like 1980 right now. I mean, that's how bad it's gotten. And, and that's how bad 2020 did for women in business and overall mm -hmm. in IT. It's just been hideous because lots of women didn't have child care, right? And there was no one to watch the children. And if you're a single parent and you didn't have help, you had to go home. Or if there was a lot of BS at work and you had all of these other things, you just said, I think I've had enough. So we've lost a lot of great women and we're hoping that um, we can do some things to get them back. And, and uh, we'll definitely delve into that and to, and to establish a little bit more of the, of the predicate. Um, this is uh, something from women in cybersecurity and uh, it'll, it'll just uh, kind of add to the conversation. So if you stand by just for a second. Cybersecurity is a vital necessity to any organization or individual who uses technology, which in today's world represents a vast majority of the population. It is critical in ensuring our assets and experiences in the cyberspace are safe and secure. But there's a problem. We need more resources in place for securing cyberspace, and we need more people to manage these resources. The cybersecurity industry is growing at a fast pace. In the U.S. alone, there are over 200,000 filled cybersecurity jobs and over 290,000 available positions. Moreover, these numbers continue to increase every day. By 2021, the number of unfilled cybersecurity jobs worldwide will reach a surprising 3.5 million. But how can we help bring more people into cybersecurity? Numbers show that we have available workforce within the STEM industry. While 50% of the STEM workforce are women, women represent 25% of the IT workforce. And furthermore, only 11% of the cybersecurity workforce. We need more initiatives to help increase the number of professionals in cyber and at the same time, address the underrepresentation problem in this industry. Numerous researchers have established with empirical evidence that a diverse workforce always outperforms a homogenous workforce. Diversity is even more crucial in the cybersecurity workforce since cybersecurity problems are complex and require to be addressed with multiple perspectives in mind. Women in Cybersecurity, aka WISIS, is an initiative that addresses gender diversity. WISIS helps to empower women who often feel isolated in the workplace by building a professional community that they can identify with. It does not exclude one gender group over another, but creates a more inclusive environment for the underrepresented ones. The WISIS community brings together women who can empower each other and collectively help in recruitment, retention, and advancement of women in this field. Together, we can make a positive impact in the cybersecurity industry. Join us. So uh, what do you think about that? <clears throat> I think it's fantastic that they put that together. I hope that I hope we can put some meat behind a lot of these initiatives so that they actually happen. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and Tyler, you know, so that uh, video I think laid out you know really uh, quite well um, the the circumstance, the opportunities. One of you know our big missions is to kind of pivot this giant aircraft carrier that we call the community or cybersecurity, you know, which kind of moves very slow on structural things like women and diversity and inclusion and compensation and things like that. But it has all these jets going on and off and it's kinetic and it's crazy. 
you know, so we want to, you know, kind of be the tip of the spear to move the industry from fear, uncertainty, and down, which everyone knows is blood, to to fun, you know, right. in some some slowly way. Even though we know <clears throat> there's a lot to be afraid and uncertain and doubtful about, but you know, what what would you share with our audience about you know how to move this you know conversation in a better direction? Well. We're, we can fix problems of tomorrow by teaching girls about cybersecurity and getting them interested in a, in a very young age. But it's kind of a more complex problem that we have now because there are the problem is there and it's having to change culture and it's having to you know really introduce diversity into this space because frankly, just like the video said, you know the more uh, diverse approaches you have to something like cybersecurity, the more the, the better your product's going to be, and um, you know the better it's going to be for cybersecurity just in of itself. So it's a more difficult problem to try to solve right now. I'm not saying it's not solvable, and I think there are a lot of steps that are being taken toward that, but it's just a more difficult issue. And and so what would you? Um what are some of the steps you, that you've seen in your career? You, you've you been in this industry quite some time. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you want to exactly date yourself, you know, but um, how long uh, have you been in the industry? Well, it's actually funny that you say that because I started um, in this industry in, in 1999. I was a sociology history major obsessed with uh, music and um I wanted to go into cybersecurity, so I moved to San Francisco. And um, back then, you would apply for jobs just through email, and there wasn't social media. There was nothing like that. And every single interview that I went on, they thought that they were they they looked at me shocked because they had no idea I was a woman because my name is Tyler, my middle name is Kevin. So. Um, I, I I really do think that that is one thing that in those early days kind of helped me get that interview and get in the door, which is is certainly not a good thing. But, um, you know, things were just kind of they were just different back then. And through my career, it's you know, it's really only been recently that I've started really noticing a push um, to bring more women and more diversity into the cybersecurity field. And I'll stop talking in a second. But one thing that I will say is I've always been very fortunate because I always had kind of a tribe of women around me um, in the same industry. And we all kind of helped each other and supported each other. And I think that's something that everybody, you know, entering an industry like this really needs to have. You know, and I can speak firsthand just uh, in the conversations I had this morning with Tina within um, three minutes, she was offering suggestions on how to help our work, you know, to amplify your mission, you know, and, and it's just a privilege to be surrounded by um, the helpers of the world, you know, the people who want to elevate, you know, other people and, and believe in, you know, like a rising tide lifts all ships. You know, and both of you uh, certainly do that. Um, so speaking of rising tides, I'm going to pop up uh, your book cover here. Tell, tell us um, uh, about this book, you know, leading through the pandemic. I mean, how, how, when did you start writing it? Um, I was asked to be part of an anthology of, of leadership um, individuals to talk about what it was like to lead during the pandemic last year. Um, not excuse me. Um, last summer, not not very long ago, and uh, and I had always wanted to write a book, and I have a book in me, and I have an idea, and I I've talked to our mutual friend Scott about this, and uh, but yet I didn't know if I could. So when I heard I just had to write three thousand words, I thought you know what I think I can do that. So I wrote about my experience, and my experience, my the chapter is titled from five-star hotels to five hours of Zoom. And what it is, is it's a very personal story about what happened to me when I came off the road and how it changed me and how I I was really affected. It was a, it was a depression um, and I had to change my life. Uh, I had a, a, an existential crisis 
because I wasn't moving fast anymore. And um, so it's not about cybersecurity, but it certainly is a tale that anybody in leadership or, or even just working through this pandemic um, could relate to. And the proceeds of the book go to support the National um, Alliance on uh, Mental Illness. So it's a very important charity um, for anybody that's suffering and many people are continue to suffer uh, through this pandemic. It's, it's, it's something that we weren't prepared for and we, we haven't known how to deal with. And, uh, you know, the more we can help each other, the better. And that was, that was reason to divulge, uh, the personal stuff. So thank you for, uh, Oh, I got a wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow. <laughs> that was perfect. I wanted a wow. Yep. I wanted a wow. You got it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's also incredibly timely, and I'm so grateful that you put out a personal experience with the mission of helping other people. Um, you know, and, and I know what you mean because you're talking about attending conferences or uh, things like that. And um, yeah. this is uh, kind of the source of my superpower. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. In a span of just three years, I attended 53 cybersecurity conferences all over the world oh. um, to listen and learn, you know, from the smartest people in the world. And my actual big aha moment came from a book called Cybersecurity for Dummies. Have you ever seen those yellow books like with the black stripe? That's Joseph Steinberg, yes. He's a, he's oh, I, went, I went through all these yeah. different, different books and conferences and stuff, and, and that was the book that caught my attention. And the reason is I was lost after 10 pages. So rather than, rather than quitting Tenacious, you know, um, I found a guy who worked at Palo Alto Networks, which are the ones who produced this book. And I got him on the phone and, and I said, you know, I, I was lost after 10 minutes and he starts laughing and I'm like a funny guy. I'm laughing with this man. So I said, why are you laughing? And he said, well, it's not really for beginners. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I would definitely why do you call it cybersecurity for dummies. I would be watch over for the real basic, you know, the senior book that he just wrote is fantastic. Cyber for seniors. That's what I do. If you want something basic to get started, that's where I'm leading my friend. Right. Well, I'm letting you and the audience in a super duper secret. You may have just seen the light bulb go out um, uh, or, or come up. That's my equivalent of the bat signal. So I, I just sent that out and we, we have a, a group of amazingly, you know, brilliant people who evidently are not busy. Um, and so they, they just can kind of, you know, uh, pop on the show. So uh, you, you mentioned Scott, I'm going to uh, wait uh, just a little bit and see if, uh, if he uh, got the bat signal and if uh, he's going to be able to, uh, to join us. Um, so, so Tyler, uh, tell us about your origin story, you know, and, and how you got into telehealth and, and um, you're so passionate about it, which, you know, I love. Absolutely. So <clears throat> my background has been um, cybersecurity. I worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency and the Department of Defense Cybercrime Center. So I incident response forensics, developing these complex systems, you know, that's what I've been trained to do. And in 2018, I got sick and I got really sick and started going through the medical system to try to figure out what was wrong and um, just kept hitting a lot of issues. I hit something that I call specialty siloing, um, where one specialist sends you to the next. Um, and also there are issues with, with records and um, you'd have to bring like hundreds of records with you to each appointment. And there's just no way that any person has time to sift through all of that, those records and put it right. in some chronological type of thing. And I came up with this concept of my connected health because for some reason I just knew it's what I needed. And, um, but it was 2018, 19 telehealth was not something people were, were interested in. Um, and I kind of gave up on the project for a while, but then when COVID hit, I said, we have to do this because it's, it's a, it's using 
a complete a cybersecurity model on top of a healthcare system. So it's a global healthcare system that um, has doctor teams and it works with AI, machine learning, and a secure crowd um, to help ensure that patients get a diagnosis. And it's global, so it actually has the ability to reach people um, in, in countries or, or people that don't have health insurance they can now get onto the system and receive great healthcare. And oh, one of the coolest things about it was while um, testing what I call human AI logic statements, that's where I just kind of write things that do things manually. Um, I inadvertently diagnosed myself um, in, in uh, May of last year. So I know the system will work. Wow. Well, what, the, what did you have? <laughs> um, it was confirmed by a doctor, but two two years, two years and three months, just suffering and suffering. Um, actually, it, it's good to make people aware of these types of rare diseases. Um, I have a disease called systemic scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, and it's an autoimmune disease, and it's a it's a doozy. It's a tough one. Um, and there's no cure at the moment, but I'm, I don't believe that. I believe every disease has a cure. We just haven't found it yet. And when I, after I went through this, this whole horrible trying to get a diagnosis phase, I swore to myself that I would do whatever it took to ensure that nobody else ever had to go through what I went through. And that's my connected health. Well, congratulations. How do people get more information about that? Um, well, they can reach out to me at Tyler at my connected health, uh, dot net, um, or they can go to our LinkedIn page, or you can find me on any platform, uh, Tyler Cohen Wood. And, and are you, um, you're partnering with, you know, different organizations? We're in early startup phase um, and we are looking to partner with multiple organizations because the system seems quite complex, but there's we're not reinventing the wheel. So there's a lot of components of it that have already been done. But this is a system that will give people a diagnosis and it will also help um, advance medical research significantly and quickly. Well, I love that. And, you know, coincident, uh, Einstein once said coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. And that's kind of a, I have these Einstein moments of which I'm having one right now, um, because um, I had the privilege of serving as the master of ceremonies for a, a recent health ISAC conference, a four-day conference, um, and got to listen and learn, you know, to some of the smartest people in that ecosystem. We also um, did something called uh, Defending Your Health, uh, which... Uh, I'm going to uh, show you in just a moment, but wait, we have good news. Hold it. Wow. There it is. Rapid responder. Oh, no. Really cool. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Look at that. Look Great at that. It's you. magic. It's magic. So Scott, you're, uh, you're incredibly bored. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I was I'd like to say, say, first of all, maybe just a, a, a thought uh, thanking these two women for being so inspiring to many of the other young women out there. I, I have a daughter thinking about college and career decisions, all these things in the future. And it's so humbling to see you guys out there fighting the fight in the world of cybercrime day after day, year after year at the trade shows, speaking together on stage, you guys do everything and uh, keep up the good work. It's encouraging to us. And it, it is a shame the fact that there's, a small percentage, I think it was 2013, about 11% in the niche of cybersecurity that were women. Now it hovers around 20% if you believe the statistics. It's improved, but that's almost 10 years and it only moved up 10%. So something is broken and something's wrong. So I applaud you guys for what you're doing. And hopefully other women out there are listening and realizing in science and math, technology, you can be a part of it and you can make a difference probably as good or even better than most of the men that we're, we're struggling through this. So we need your help. So hopefully others can rise to the cause and put on their superhero capes and costumes and everything else and join the fight. You know, to build on that uh, point, uh, one of the interesting things that uh, I've learned in working with uh, 
NIST. Uh, they have a division called the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, I'm sure you're all familiar with. The mission is to encourage uh, young people to take STEM and to eventually matriculate into careers in cybersecurity. And one of the things that just blew my mind when I sort of got deeper into it is that there are actually uh, around 52 individual workloads in cybersecurity according to the NICE framework. Wow. And what what seems to happen in, in middle middle school seems to be where it, it starts to get disjointed, like fourth and fifth grade. There, I'm going to be uh, partnering with, with an academic institution about some research about this stuff. And um, that's about where kids sort of drop out, women especially, or girls especially. And it's because we just have to make this stuff cool. You know, I hate to sound so simplistic, but just make it cool, you know, and like, you know, instead of, instead of uh, just sort of death by PowerPoint, you right. know, and uh, we, in fact, we even created a character called the presenter and Ooh. she has an emulet, you know, that shoots out PowerPoint slides. Can, what do you think her superpower is? It's based on PowerPoint. She can teleport. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. just kidding. That's just a super powerful. Like read a mind and then. Yep. Also excellent. <laughs> people to sleep. Sleeper. Oh. It's in PowerPoint. She puts oh. people to sleep. Oh my god. Oh wow. That was so right. much easier than I would <laughs> Murder by PowerPoint, right? I'm, I, I, I'm asking rhetorically, have you ever fallen asleep during a PowerPoint or when you're giving one? So, you know. You uh, just answered the question, though, about this these in middle school. Make it cool. Make it fun. You just said take FUD to fun. You, you're, you're answering this question. But we, we, have to, we have to do it for girls, too. And we have to do it in a way that they think is cool. And not always... Will they look this at the same things we look at and find them cool? You know, I'm finding that out. I have a 14 year old that uh, just, actually 15 this weekend, and uh, the things I think are cool are not exactly what she thinks are cool. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm learning, right? Uh, but but what I would say is that in their minds. It's about coding and wearing a hoodie and eating ramen noodles and this like hacker persona. They don't really understand that cybersecurity is about human behavior, that there's a human component and it's fascinating to learn about people and to learn what people are doing and, and what Tyler said earlier about the culture. You know, there's so much to it. And you're the kind of guy, Gary, that can, can bring this piece to life. But I'm not sure it's a superhero. It might be a superhero that has great hair or a superhero that knows something about fashion. You know, I don't know because I, I'm not cool enough to tell you what a 14 Oh, yes, you are. You, yes, you, you are. You're on, the, you're on the this level. Oh. Wait, I never got, hey, how come I never got a wow? Yeah, she should have gotten a wow because she's saving lives, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, it gives you something to aspire to the next time you come on the show. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> you know, speaking of aspirations, <laughs> I'm sort of making this cool. You know, um, I, I noticed something a long time ago. I happen to have two daughters. By the way, half our characters in all of our comics are women or people of color or disabled or veterans. You know, uh -huh. very cognizant of the subliminal nature of that, you know. And, and so um, I was working with Nice and they did something that I think is just brilliant because if you think about, let's say an award ceremony at a, at a, at a high school, uh, they have all these trophies, you know, arranged by different heights and the smallest trophy uh, here, you know, here is Susan. She speaks six, six languages, you know, here, here is uh, Mike. He's worked at the United Nations and, you know, as a dentist, you know, um, all these things, they get these little tiny trophies. And then as they get bigger and bigger, bigger, guess who gets the largest trophy? Basketball? Yeah, sports. <laughs> Basketball. Well, watch this. Watch the genius of what these people created. Okay. The clock is ticking down. The pressure is on. Decisions need to be made. Will their efforts be enough? 
Hello, everyone. My name is Greg Simmons. I'm the sports director and sports anchor for KSAT 12 in San Antonio, Texas. It is my honor to be your master of ceremonies for the third annual National Cyber Signing Day. Every day, a team of professionals prepares to defend themselves against opponents who never quit. The playing field is never equal, and the threats are ever evolving. This is bigger than sports. This is cyber security. These Hello, I'm Davina pruitt Mental, and I serve as the lead for academic engagement for the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, or the NICE Program Office. On behalf of the NICE Program, we are thrilled to congratulate the participating students in the 2020 National Cybersecurity Signing Day celebration. Thanks, Davina. First up, Emily Moody. Emily is a 12th grader at New Century Technology High School in Huntsville, Alabama. She's a leader of the high school's Cyber Patriots team and also loves to compete in Cyber Skyline Capture the Flag competition. I am Latasha McCord, the Cybersecurity K-12 Education Program Lead. On behalf of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, I would like to congratulate these students who have committed to entering the cybersecurity workforce. Hi everyone, I'm the unsung cyber hero and I represent all of the real life cyber heroes who are the defenders of the digital universe. They toil in anonymity to keep us safe at work, at home and at school. Congratulations to each and every one of you for the great achievements and accomplishments that you have made and will continue to make as you pursue the coolest education and career as future defenders of the digital universe. Wherever you are on your digital journey, such as beginning an internship or apprenticeship, you should know that you are on a mission that is one of the most important, meaningful, and gratifying things that you can do with your entire life. Think about it. You are helping people stay safe online now and for future generations. Now, I'd like to show you the source of my superpowers. Yes, I'm actually a regular person, and I just want to take this time to say a special thank you to your parents and teachers and mentors and everyone who has helped you arrive at this important moment. You want to see the source of my superpower? I'll show you. Lifelong learning. These are conference badges. In the last three years, I've been to over 53 cybersecurity conferences and had the privilege of listening and learning from the smartest people in the world. And at 63 years of age, I got my very first certification. So I know that by the time you're my age, you're gonna have a lot more of these. And congratulations on that. Welcome to the digital universe. We need you right now. Incredible video uh, as a way to make it cool, you know. And uh, one of the things you'll notice about about my my costume is that I was actually invisible because any place that you see green happens to be the exact same color of a green screen that I use, you know, for certain things. So you can literally see right through me. So there's no due diligence, you know. I'm totally transparent. Wow. There's nothing to see, you know. Um, so. Wow, I mean, we could just go on and on, I, but you know, we have to kind of wrap up here. Uh, Tyler, do you have any um, final thoughts about uh, amplifying your mission, you know, your telehealth initiative, or or about you know being a woman in cybersecurity? Um, you know, I actually will give some advice um, that I would have given to my younger self in in this career, and it really would have been. Do not let anyone, including myself, tell me that I can't do something or that I'm not good enough. And also, um, I've learned that you can't really blame. Oh, yes, I got it. Yay! That ev everyone's going to make mistakes, but you cannot blame a past self for doing something that they had the best intentions of doing from the hindsight of your present self. Oh, and yeah. once, once you take that in, it, it's much easier to just kind of go forth and, and succeed. So go forth. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something. You have a giant new you and old you and whatever the future is fan in me. Well, thank you. Me, me three. Me three. And I have all of you. <laughs>
We can do a virtual hug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I got I got a real one. Okay, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. baby, I love you. <laughs> Tyler knows Sully. Tyler knows Sully. He oh, shows dude. every now and then. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what's your dog's? No, hold the dog up. I want to see the dog. Oh. <laughs> The only reason I put him in is because he was barking earlier when you were playing the first video. And I thought, you heard him, you might as well see him. He's gone now. He doesn't want any part of this. He gets money for these things. Yes, I do it for free. Well, I, I'm sorry I'm barking up the wrong tree. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I, just, I just want you to know that this has been... This is, this is the best Monday I think I've had in a long time. It really feels like Friday, you know, because we're having so much fun. I should do this every Monday, hang out with Gary, and then I'll feel like it's Friday, and maybe I'll go home on Tuesday and think it's the weekend and come back on Thursday or Friday. You know, I don't know. Well, so, I don't wanna, never, I, never boring with you around. That's I don't want to be uh, responsible for your circadian rhythm, but you're welcome to be a rapid responder. And so... You know, if you, I have to, maybe you know, like I have to find a way to get this signal like out around the whole world okay. um, so people can jump in. Because, you know, I, I um, first of all, you're, you're incredibly generous with your words. I, you know, I have, I have the best mission. All I do is listen and learn from people like you. And, and, um, and uh, it's incredibly um, rewarding. So thank you for who you are. Scott, you have the final word. Oh, I just want to thank you guys again for all the great stuff that you're doing and all the women out there in cyber and keep up the great work yourself there, Gary, with all the stuff you're doing here on the Cyber Hero Adventures and making a platform just so everybody could be heard. And uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, have a great day. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Gary. Bye-bye.